everyone. Welcome to At Home with Sally. I'm Sally Clarkson, and I have the biggest privilege in the world to be with so many friends from all over the world who join me every week to listen to my stories, inspiration, biblical encouragement, and I am just so glad that you're here today. Thanks so much for joining me. Hello, my friends. Happy Monday. I want to leave a little bit with you. I'm going to be traveling in the next week and meeting with people and doing many things. I'm going to London to get a part of a visa uh, with my children, lots of different things. I know that your lives are so full. Either if you have littles, you're not sleeping, or maybe you just are caught up in the whirlwind and sometimes the mundane and sometimes the demands of it all. Um, Or maybe you're at the other end. Maybe you are uh, older like I am and and you you are feeling the uh, vestiges of old age and the interesting ways that they come upon you just like they did your parents. It's a reminder to me that I am living my parents' life right now. Or maybe you have teenagers and you're worn out, or junior high kids who are starting to react hormonally, or a difficult marriage, or uh, difficulty with finances, or a health issue. The reason I wanted to name most of these issues is because there are so many precious ones of you out there, Um, maybe you're without a friend, um, who feel alone, who feel like you're the only one, and Whatever uh, place in life you find yourself, whatever circumstances, you are not alone. You are not the only one experiencing this. Uh, You do not have to remain isolated. You are companioned by God. He sees you. And right in your story where you are, the way that you respond to your emotions to your circumstances, to your life, will determine the long-term outcome of how you do at this point in your story, at this part of your life. Uh, I'm going to have a very short podcast today, as I have been doing on Mondays, but I have a little book that I enjoy that is a quiet time book. Um, You know, it just has a bunch of different verses in it. There's so many like this, and uh, I hesitate to recommend it to you because it's probably out of print anyway. But anyway, uh, I just happened to be reading today about the rest, R-E-S-T, of God, that, that it is His will that wherever we are in our lives, that we find rest and peace. And so I thought I would read some of these verses to you today, maybe comment on them just a little bit. But it's interesting to me, again, uh, I'm trying to go through different verses to show you the heart of God, the multidimensional heart of God. He loves us, He helps us, He companions us, he, uh, it, all, He's all the things I've said. But anyway, first of all, in Ruth 3.1, uh, we see in Ruth's life the reflection of her desire to bring peace to Naomi, her mother-in-law. Here she's just lost her husband, and so has Naomi, and which means she is uprooted as a woman, probably doesn't have money or a job, uh, and yet she is considering the needs of her precious mother-in-law, uh, the one that she has attached herself to, which is kind of sweet. I have a daughter-in-law like that, and It's just very, very precious to me. Um, But this is what Ruth said, which is the heart of God's attitude. Oh, shall I not seek security for you, that it may be well with you? In other words, entreat me not to leave you. Don't, Don't ask me to leave you, nor to return from following you, for your people will be my people, and your God will be my God. And she says, Shall I not seek security for you, Naomi, that it may be well with you? And that's what our God does. He never leaves us. He seeks 
security for us. He seeks our well-being, however long that may take in this very, very broken world that's hurling itself in the direction of the coming of Jesus, whenever that is. We will have peace. Okay, there, this is a, uh, another verse that I love. I love Hebrews. These are from all my favorite chapters. Hebrews 4.9 says, There yet remains a rest for the people of God. God does not want us to flounder or flail. He wants us to live with the peaceful confidence that He is at ease. He is working in the world. He is working in our lives. And He wants us to have rest. There is a rest. There remains a rest for the people of God. The next verse that I have is in Isaiah 32, 18. And I'm going to read a little bit more than just 32, 18, because it's so beautiful. Um, It's talking about how, in some of the verses, Israel has... um, has rebelled, the women have forgotten their roles, their place, Uh, all of the different uh, people have followed idols, and um, it says about the women, oh, you will be troubled, oh complacent daughters, uh, for the vintage is ended and the fruit gathering will not come. In other words, uh, these women have been um, passive passive towards God's righteousness. We may not remain passive. He says, Tremble, you women who are at ease. Be troubled, you complacent daughters. Strip, undress, and put sackcloth on your waist. In other words, he wants us to be attentive. He wants us to rest in him. But this is where the verse starts about his desire to bring us peace. The Spirit, until the Spirit is poured out upon us from on high in the wilderness, will become a fruitful field when the Spirit is poured out upon us. The fertile field will be considered as a forest. It will just be proliferated with trees. Then justice will dwell in the wilderness Even in the very most difficult places, justice will come. Righteousness will abide in the fertile field. And the work of righteousness will be peace. And the service of righteousness, quietness and confidence forever. Then my people will live in a peaceful habitation and in secure dwellings and in undisturbed resting places. So there is the heart of God. When the Spirit is poured out, there will be justice in the wilderness, righteousness in the fertile fields, uh, and in the work of righteousness, there will be peace. When you are righteous and you walk with God and you rest in God, you will have peace. You will have quietness, you will have confidence forever and live in a peaceful habitation with secure dwellings in undisturbed resting places. Wouldn't it be wonderful when our resting places are undisturbed and filled with peace? All right. Um, The next verse is in Job. And God says, eventually, there the wicked cease from troubling and there the weary are at rest, they will be at rest from their labors. God promises this. And then the next verse I have is in Revelation 14, 13. It says, The forerunner has entered for us, even Jesus having become the high priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. Jesus is going before us to establish his kingdom of peace Jesus is the forerunner. He is the one who is championing us. He is the one who cares that we have peace. He said to us, Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. God wants us 
to roll our troubles off into his hands today to give us rest. Everyone I know right now is saying, how are you? I am tired. Everyone in my life here in Oxford, how are you? I'm tired. But here we have a promise that all you who are labor and heavy laden, I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly or humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. My friends, take a breath. Find rest for your souls today. The next verse is Matthew eleven twenty eight. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The next verse, in returning and in rest you will be saved. When you return to God, in rest you will be saved. In quietness and confidence shall be your strength. Isn't that interesting? That's a beautiful verse from Isaiah 30, verse 15. In returning and rest you shall be saved, and in quietness and confidence you will find strength. Well, my friends, I hope that today you will take the time just to ponder how this is reflected in your life, that you will take a breath, that you will breathe out the difficulty and breathe in the beautiful and know that your Jesus is the Prince of Peace and He cares that you let Him carry you today. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray that you would encourage Strengthen, bless, answer, comfort these precious ones who hear today um, these words from your heart, that it is your will that even when we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, even when we see burdens, that you want us to give our burdens to you and give us peace and rest, knowing that in time we will see your accomplishment in your way. Answer our prayers. Come to us personally that we might find the rest and peace in you that you have provided. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, my friends, have a good rest of the day. Bye-bye. I hope you've enjoyed our time together today and that you'll join me next week. Be sure to look for more inspiration on my blog at sallyclarkson.com. Thanks for joining me. Bye-bye.